Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is Healer, and today we have the final, for now, installment of the Paradigm Shift series. If you saw the last video, you could see I concluded that the old versus new Roblox debate sucks and needs a revamp. Old Roblox has become too hazy and unclear of a concept, and everyone's margin of what it even constitutes is too vague. It didn't really propose a solution or a substitute for the debate, but this video will serve as just that. I propose to you the Roblox Cultural Timeline! Yay! This is a section where I tell you how I'll address each era. I'll talk a bit about the culture of the era and a few aspects of it in a rather formulaic way. What update or movement helped kicked off the era? What update or movement put it to an end? Who was a good zeitgeist or a notable figure for that era? What are some notable games? What was the YouTube scene like? These will be questions I'll try to answer for each era moving forward. With that out of the way, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video. Top dog, buy them all, yeah, I'm burning it up. DPG, so you should be turning on that. CBT, LBC, yeah. I only included this one so the fucking nerd emoji people won't get mad at me. Um, actually, you forgot the time David took a shit and sold it to Microsoft for $2.47? Like we know, shut up! Anyways, uh, YouTube wasn't a thing, so there weren't any prominent YouTubers, and the zeitgeist of the time was hustling for money because selling quirky physics engines was the shit back in the WizKid computer days. The most notable Robloxian is nobody! It doesn't exist yet! No accounts have been made. Go blocks? More like go make yourself an account. Blocks. I don't know who created Pokemon Go. But I'm trying to figure out how we get them to have Pokemon go to the polls. Roblox, I guess then Dinoblox, was the first official iteration of the game we know now. It was very bare bones and closed off to the public for large stretches of time. The actual games and features were limited and only just showcases for physics properties and nothing too cool or interesting, at least compared to the, the eras that came after it. The defining update of this era was that accounts existed. This was a thing. Also, it wasn't just a bunch of weird companies and business ventures from the 20th century. This was the start as a patented online building toy. Speaking of, Roblox wasn't an MMO sandbox, nor a metaversal experience hub. At least not yet. It was literally just a bunch of blocky, physics-based minigames with little to no player customization. Notable Robloxians of the time were Eric Castle and David Bazuki, as they were the two founders and big boys running the place. If you want a specific account, I think the Toolbox account was a very notable one as it held most of the models at the time and was a very influential test account used by both David and Eric. YouTube was in its infancy and the earliest videos I could find were in 2006, so there weren't any notable YouTubers for the era of Roblox. For the notable games, uh, Spasmatron 2 vs. Wimpatron 2 has a funny name. Let's go with that one. When I try to tackle the reason the pre-release era ended, I get stumped. This is because it didn't really definitively end. What I mean is that there's not a real event or cultural shift where it caused an era change. At least not in a contemporary sense. Join dates, games, and... Uh, miscellaneous features in 2004 to 2005 have been wiped and were momentarily lost to history. I would have said it ended when the game was officially released, late 2006. However, in terms of eras, 2006 as a whole belongs with the 07-08 crowd. Why? Well, while Roblox officially released in late 2006, it was very publicly in open beta in early 2006. Not only that, this is cultural, not historical. I mean, they kind of the same thing, but who's keeping track?
When I say cultural, I mean I'm taking this video in a more casual, anecdotal, and personal view. If I was playing by rigid pragmatic rules, I definitely would have put early 2006 into this era. 2006 was way more feasible and documented compared to the previous two years. 2004 and 2005 Roblox share this weird arcane type of vibe. Plenty of the material we know of now has come out in recent years by people smarter and more research friendly than me. These developments show what the Dynablox days were really like are relatively recent. Those first two years were basically David, Eric, their friends and family, and 100 random tech enthusiasts. I remember back in my day that actually be people who claim they played 2005 Roblox. Stop the cap! <laughs> This was back when the only thing people really knew about pre-release era was that it used to be called Dynablox, and that was kind of it. Being an 08er or 09er is a common old head claim, a 2007 claim is rarer but somewhat feasible, and any claim from 2010 and beyond is cool but not that valuable. 2006 serves as a gatekeeper year of people actually entertaining your claim and having a sliver of believability hearing it. Claiming you're from 2005 nowadays is just laughable. There's a fat chance you were one of the 100 tech enthusiasts or Bilderman's nephew that was granted access to Roblox. Either way, sorry for the big-ass tangent. Here's my conclusion for this year's conflict. In the Roblox culture, 2006 possesses more parallels with the subsequent years of 07 to 08, as opposed to the pre-release era of 04 to 05. Just saying this in case some triggered 2016 people come and attack me. When I say this is the golden era, I'm kind of using it like people use the golden age for comics, okay? Okay? I'm not saying it's better or anything like that. Just keep calm. Listen to what I have to say about this era, okay? Put down the fucking gun. 2006 to 2008 was characterized as being definitively old Roblox, or at least the first wave of old Roblox. The classic era embodied constant evolution of vintage audio-visual flair and a culture uh, reminiscent of the outlaw days of the internet. The community felt more tight-knit and close due to a smaller size. It felt akin to other MMOs such as Club Penguin or Toontown, and that it had a juvenile audience with a homey atmosphere. Since 2006 barely qualifies historically, I think it's hard to depict when the golden era began. I think a good starting place would have to be the introduction of the Roblox avatar. It wasn't just free cam shenanigans anymore. It was in a weird sphere-headed block guy. The classic Robloxian we all know and love today materialized in early 2006, before the game even opened up, I believe. The introduction of a streamlined avatar allowed for the game to eventually be known for its brick battles, obbies, and building sandboxes rather than the physics puzzles and minigames of the pre-release era. A lot of brick battle games were commonplace. You got your hood classics like Rocket Arena, Crossroads, and Glass Houses. There were also other specialized battling games such as Sword Fights on the Heights or Ultimate Paintball. Obstacle courses weren't uncommon such as Dodge the Teapots of Doom. A user who best encapsulates the era would have to be Air92. He's been there since 2006 and was a Roblox YouTuber, a Roblox developer, and a multi-time contest winner. And he was just an overall, like, involved community member. Shedletsky, then known as Telemon, also deserves a mention for being so active and being the builder for a lot of these brick battle places. I want to keep these user YouTube recommendations as mod-free as possible, but his, his OG cred cannot be denied. Okay, thank Telemon. Okay? When it comes to YouTubers, I wouldn't count Air92 as the go-to guy. It's either between JJ5X5 or Flesk HJurda. 
They were known for their series involving random XD funny sketch compilations on Roblox. Roblox Gone Crazy and Roblox Bloopers, respectively. Not only that, both of them made videos since 2007 and their YouTube careers more or less died along with the era. Flesk especially so. He got permanently banned at the tail end of 2008. The golden era's end was caused by a lot of changes in the presentation, community, and features. There's a couple incidents I want to address. Flesk's ban was one of them. The ban in general was a huge gut punch to the Roblox YouTube scene. In early 2009, they got rid of the classic staple of the Golden Era's look, the Circle Studs, and in its place we also have the iconic Square Stud, but at the time it was controversial. Another thing is that 2008 is the year players started booming. It was like the first player boom, relatively speaking, of course. There were just so many old heads who live and breathe old Roblox, yet they came out at the tail end of it. So the golden era culture was kind of built upon stolen valor. Speaking of stolen valor. Silver era is a turning point where the people of the golden era started to feel sour towards Roblox. Although it was more or less the same throughout the two years, same blockiness, same simplicity, pretty much similar on all fronts, the game just seemed to cultivate a bit of cynicism and jadedness. Feeling wasn't in full swing as these years were like more of a last hurrah of classic Roblox for the people in the golden era. Another thing to mention is how harsh the dividing line for these two years was. 2006 is the gatekeeper year for qualifying as an old head because claiming anything before is probably cap or you're just David. 2009 is the gatekeeper year for the opposite side of the spectrum. While 2009 was begrudgingly allowed into the old head club, 2010 got the cuts. This two-year period is less of a transition and more of a segregation in the culture of Roblox. People of Roblox, at least at the time, like to think of the years as a whole, so that's probably why it feels so harsh of a divide. With all that being said, the community started widening and there were more creators in what we know as classics today. Some notable classics I've seen with games were uh, One Dev 2's Welcome to the Town of Robloxia, Detine's Reason for Life, Place Rebuilder's Reason to Die, a lot of Left 4 Dead stuff, huh? And the most copied place in the world, Disaster Hotel. The rest of the game seen at the time were just carried over from the golden era. The YouTuber scene was starting to cultivate a little more, too. This era started to stray away from Telemon promo or random XD funny clips. I think the person who perfectly encapsulates the Silver Era zeitgeist is Zhao Zhao Man. His videos going from quirky old Roblox shenanigans in 2009 to new Roblox sucks rhetoric of 2010 is quite noticeable. In his first voiced Roblox video, he actively shits on the platform for going downhill because of a Disney collab. For a user, I'll include Stickmaster Luke. Like Air92, he was known for being an all-around involved member in the Roblox community. For game making, you got the Underground War. For YouTube, you got him dominating the era with banger after banger. For community, he was so involved, he eventually became a mod too. Since mod powers came after his era, I'll include him here, as he was a normal player, just like everybody else. Banana bacon. That's more like it. Let me call up my nip. What did you just say, you racist motherfucker? My nipples, you tardry. It's retard, you retard. Fuck you, bitch. Do what I say. Stop referencing your videos. Shut the no. fuck up! What? Oh my oh. god. His penis is in your mouth, Jake. Oh! Oh. 
This is where things get juicy, baby. This is uh, this era is our first taste of the omnipresent debate: old Roblox versus new Roblox. While there was a lot of Roblox going downhill type of discussion during the Silver Era, this discussion wasn't as crazy as it was during this time. The talks of Roblox's new updates and innovations and cultural movements were met with plenty of criticism. We want old Roblox back was a common sentiment. The instance of old glazing wasn't unjustified because unlike today, the old versus new Roblox debate was more cut and dry. And unlike today, a lot of the concerns were justified. A lot of the criticisms like art direction going astray, more online daters, and what I feel encapsulates the era, plagiarism. Jared Valdez defined the zeitgeist of the bronze era roblox and i'd argue is what kicked it off he was a roblox developer who was controversial as he was successful he plagiarized games plagiarized groups plagiarized clothes plagiarized videos on youtube he plagiarized everything he could get his hands on jared was also known for employing a bait and switch tactic he walked so people like Julius Cole, Pie Person 50, and Tremedy could run. It was a bad time for front page games. It was also a good thing this trend was mostly contained within this era. Imagine having half the front page games be fake or not as advertised. Despite Jared Valdez's dominance on the front page, there were still plenty of honest good games that were popular and made around the time. The furry fox, virus fixin' now, what? Made a classic in Survive the Disaster. Gus Manak and Zolder Keith, Keith, Cucumber, created a Kobe and Shaq duo and made one of the most cutting-edge games of the Bronze Era, Apocalypse Rising. One Dev 2, now One Dev 3, ended the era with Robloxity in 2013. Role-playing in general took a huge kickoff. Juvenile role-plays such as the MLP game and the Spyro's The Complex took off in this era, and more mature role-plays were essentially birthed with Chad the Creator's Game series after The Flash. My favorite aspect of this era would definitely have to be the content creation on YouTube. Barring the anomalies, it felt like a bunch of tweens and teens taking a stab at making funny videos or videos they were truly passionate about. The scene was just so much more niche and cool. In Roblox YouTube terms, if you want to gauge a Roblox YouTuber's popularity at the time, take their sub count, add three more zeros to it, and that's how famous they'd be in the Bronze Era culture. So someone with 1k subs would be a million subscriber bona fide big player in the Roblox YouTube scene. Here are a couple Roblox YouTubers that came up during this era. Firefox was the Roblox YouTube golden child, even though his rise was at the latter half of 2013. He was a late but defining part of the era. The bulk of Aqua Chick's career took place in the Bronze Era. There's also frequent collaborators to a lot of channels, such as Isis Spy and Lightning Girl 107. The main YouTuber who best represents the Bronze Era hatery, however, was a uh, a name I don't think I'm allowed to say anymore. <laughs> the bulk of their career was also during the Bronze Era, and a good portion of his videos was just bemoaning about how much new Roblox sucked. His channel was on life support and later discontinued uh, once we got to the Dev Era. More of that in a minute. The final nail in the coffin for the Bronze Era was the introduction of Developer Exchange. It was introduced in late 2013 and changed the front page scene, the culture of Roblox, the economy of Roblox, and increased the potential of Roblox as a platform exponentially. It was a change that really shook up the platform and put a pretty definitive end to the Bronze Era. The dev era was a very transitional time for Roblox all around. It wasn't an invisible transition from physics engines to blocky madness, nor was it a segregational divide between old and new Roblox. This was the growing pains of a game shifting towards a more corporate and monetizable platform. 
Not saying this as a purely bad thing, mind you. It was quite a magical time, actually, with all this friendly competition and innovation being present within the games and community. With all that being said, this time had growing pains for a reason. The pushing of developers was so forced that a lot of people, including myself back in the day, despised it. I've neglected to mention this in my past videos, but Roblox events were a pretty big deal. The Golden Era's events were a showstopper. The Silver, the Silver Era had pretty decent stuff come up. The Bronze Era was pretty spotty, but it had a consensus goaded egg hunt, so I think it can. I think it evens out. Uh, the events in the Dev Era were either subjugated to developers and not produced by Roblox themselves, which was a pretty big outrage at the time, or it was heavily favored for devs only. A user who encapsulates the anti-dev movement was Navy898. That's Ruben Sim, don't you know? He was a former and also a Roblox YouTuber, but in this era of Roblox, he only had about 1k subs to his name at his peak during this time. At the time of his band, it was more closer to 100. Ruben trivia aside, he had a gimmick called Roblox Watch, where it imitated a news channel, but it quickly devolved into an anti-Roblox show where he would call out the corporation for preferential treatment to developers and the incompetence with moderation. As such, his accounts got banned. <laughs> Why? It's complicated. I'll save that for a segment in next week's video. It's not a paradigm shift video, trust. Lawlorus was easily the most successful developer at the time. I would place him on the opposite side of the anti-dev spectrum. He was probably the dev with the most preferential treatment, too. Calling him out on the forums or being critical of uh, his preferential treatment got you sent to Roblox hell, and it took a lengthy email exchange between Ruben Sim and some offshore employee to actually get his account moderated. Now, I don't think Lawlorus is a bad guy, nor deserves all the hate he got. I'm just pointing out he was the head of a controversial era. To lighten up the topic, the murder craze is what I'll highlight for notable games within this era. You just had to be there. It was crazy. In early 2014, you had Murder Mystery by Nicholas. Not long after, Clone Trooper 1019 throws his hat in the ring and makes murder. A less played, but higher quality murder clone. Then Lawlorus comes in and makes the mad murder, arguably the most original with uh, its audiovisuals and presentation of the three. But at the time, it was the least respected. Who needs respect when you got the most visits of the three, baby? At least at the time. In 2015, it wasn't the big three, but more so the big two, as Taymaster made a popular one called Twisted Murder, and is between Taymaster and Lawlorus at that point. YouTube kind of fucking sucked during those years, at least when it came to glow-ups or notable creators. Mr. Obvious, while a vet at this point, popped off with animations, but he's a creep. Roast Scripts popped off as a newcomer, but he's a creep. Fave created terrible, horrible, no good, very bad machinimas that I always hated. And big surprise, he's a creep. Fuck Fave, piece of shit. I'd feel very bad including any of these guys for further viewing. Every other YouTuber who lived and died in this era expunged their catalog, so recommending them wouldn't really sit right with me. So with little to no options, I'll stick with uh, Albert's stuff. His style of videos at the time were just gameplay commentary, and this was the most reserved version of the YouTuber we ever got. They were cool. Whether it be a Jordan Pippen duo of him and Jang E, Jang G, J, J on APOC, or the cool ass framed gameplay. That was that was like Roblox Hall of Fame tier, baby. The man did not miss during his rise. This era came into an end when the murder game stabilized and the YouTube scene exploded, which happened the very next era. I just want to say this. I wasn't as involved with the Roblox community or the culture at the time compared to previous eras. I was kind of in niche microcosms unrelated to the apex of what Roblox has to offer. The majority of my audience has come from this stretch, so please leave in the comments below what this era meant to you. It helped flesh out this portion a lot and it'd create a nice discussion. 
the modern classic era is essentially just a rerun of the golden era in a way. It may have not had the emphasis on brick battles, the incentive to produce games for only fun, nor the simplistic audiovisual flair, but it's considered the old Roblox to a lot of people. The era divide I mentioned in the last video, although present here, uh, was kind of muted in comparison from the golden era versus the bronze era. The player base exploded and the cultural zeitgeists weren't actively shitting on the era they were playing on. Fucking slur Roblox. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so the platform for Roblox criticism against this era felt considerably smaller. It appears as such in both sheer size and proportionality. Speaking of size, this era was monumental for Roblox YouTube. The dev era and bronze era made YouTube an actual scene, but when we go to the modern classic era, it's now a cornerstone of YouTube content. There's not any real individual I could distinctly say defined the era, as every Roblox YouTuber you probably heard of came during this era, came after it, or got their heyday during or after it. The situation was a bit of an enthralling sight to see. A fellow Robloxian making an actual career off of YouTube? Impossible! Most of the games I see mentioned within the 2016 era are just polished versions of games that already had their uprising in previous eras. For example, Prison Life 2.0 was popular in the modern classic era. However, it was created and still popular back in the dev era. That being said, there were some cool games that come out during this time. Bedemo's Jailbreak, uh, Tower of Hell, Meep City, Identity Fraud. There were some really great and or really popular games to have come out during this time. And although it doesn't really scratch the itch of other eras, there's still some games here that have to be acknowledged. A good person to crown for the modern classic era would probably have to be Dr. Trey Blocks. Hey, that's Dan TDM! Back in the day, there were anomalies. 100k from Roblox, that's literally impossible otherwise. Venturian Tale was known for like seven other games too, so they barely even count as an anomaly. Tobuscus played the game like thrice before stopping. Mainstream YouTubers and Roblox were not symbiotic. Dan TDM's consistency with affiliating with the game all throughout the modern classic era was a large contributing factor to what made Roblox appear so huge and legitimate. Sure, he joined in the dev era, but I think him sticking around for the majority of this era cements his spot for the current time. A good update that signified the end would probably be the widespread release of Arthro at the end of 2018. The dev era was to ease us into the monetization of Roblox. The next era I'm about to present was made to ease us into the corporatization of Roblox. I'm not sure what to call this era even. It's like the silver era a decade prior. There's a segregation of Roblox being old and new. 2019 was begrudgingly one of the good years, while the year of 2020 is just crappy modern Roblox. It's a cyclical pattern I noticed between now and then. That being said, this one is probably the least defined era in Roblox history. This is because for one, it just ended, and two, it's too weird. The dividing line isn't just some arbitrary consensus like the Silver Era, but from an actual real-world event. The pandemic swept and locked us all in our homes. You get the gist? Because of the homestuck atmosphere, the player base boomed, and the culture inevitably adapted around this change. This period of time was also the last hurrah for the modern classic players because, well, what else are you going to do if they quit Roblox? Go outside? 
uh, there's some games that popped on the radar during this era. Arsenal was pretty obscure until the revamp in 2019 helped it take off. A book of Samson 16's hit series, Camping, took place within this era. Mini Toons Piggy exploded in popularity during the pandemic. Seriously, that thing became like an overnight juggernaut. Other than that, it's pretty much the same deal as the previous era. A lot of carryover from previous years. A notable YouTuber I'd mention is Ruben Sim. I mentioned him earlier as a player, but for this era, he is a YouTuber, okay? Okay? This time in Roblox history, he was the friendliest uh, the Ruben and Roblox relations have ever been since the, the deletion. This was also the most notable era of his career. The bulk of his high-effort gameplay videos uh, that he was known for took place within this era. So it's cool to see him thrive, at least for a small time. Other YouTubers to rise around this time were commentary channels, like Kaneka. Oh. Well, there's also Nathur... Uh, uh, let, let's just stick with Ruben. Money. This era is the one we're in right now, baby! Again, there's this parallel of a decade prior, where this era is the new Roblox to the modern classics old Roblox. Not much I can say other than it's a uh, pretty decent time, eh? Thanks to post-COVID. Well, not really post-COVID. Nicole Raffi puts it best. Post-COVID. COVID is still happening, but I, I don't know what to call it. It's not post-pandemic. It's not post-COVID. Okay, like, let's just call it the delusional times. That's what we're in currently. We're, we're being delusional right now. We are in the delusional era. I guess we'll call it post-lockdown. Not being ball and chain to Roblox anymore because of a pandemic, I think the introduction of yet another player boom caused the people from the modern classic era to project their hate towards the metaverse era for feeling very dystopian, extreme, and gaudy. That being said, the games here are sexy. The absolute sexiest games in the history of Roblox. You got doors, evade, that's it. No, I'm kidding. There's a bunch of other stuff, such as Squid Game clones, God's Will, On Tap, Frontlines released this year, FNAF Co-op, and Please Donate. All these games are pretty banging, and they all came out. The, uh, they all came out in this era. Good stuff all around the board. There's been a little renaissance of an underground YouTube scene, baby. The uh, woo. People like Bredian, Nitro Lord, CN Nation, Benja, Sting, Green Apple Snap, all these youngins. Barring Ruben Sim, I was mostly clocked out of Roblox YouTube by the time the modern classic era rolled around. My engagement to Roblox YouTube has kind of made a return as of late. Sub to me and sub to these guys I mentioned. This was supposed to be a quick 10 minute video, now it's this. What the hell? I need to stop waffling, bro!